Hi, this is Jim Coppinger with Zen Tech Consultants. I wanted to talk to you today about the concept of dynamic modeling in Civil 3D and how it can have a really positive impact on your projects. One of the common arguments that I get from folks who aren't already using Civil 3D or who maybe have it in-house and aren't really making regular or effective use of it is that it just seems too complicated for them to take the time to learn and, and, and build for the minimal return, right? They're used to using uh, you know, 2D AutoCAD-based products. They've been sketching and laying these things out for many years, and they're comfortable with that, and they don't want to spend the time to work on it. Um, you know, real common answer I get from folks is they say, well, you know, I, I only work on small three to four acre sites and the time that I need to invest to, you know, do these complex things in civil 3D, it's just, you know, it takes far too much time. It's easier to just have my people do it by hand. Well, I hate to tell you folks, but you're completely wrong when you give me that argument. And I'm going to show you why today. We're going to talk about the idea of dynamic modeling. So you see what I have here on screen. Right, it's just a basic layout I've done in Civil 3, and I don't have anything very complex. I have an existing site, right, an existing surface that was already built. I just laid out a, a quick center line of road alignment from which I generated a profile, which you can kind of see up here. This blue line is my center line of road profile, and I generated some cross sections from it. Right? So you can see the red lines are kind of my existing uh, cross section setup. Right? So I can see I can zoom in on that real quick. So you can see I got my existing cross sections working right there. Right? So what I want to show you guys is this idea of dynamic modeling, how everything in Civil 3D is interactive with everything else in Civil 3D, and that all of those items are going to have a, a dramatic impact on the speed and accuracy with which you can get your jobs done, regardless of the size. So what I'm going to do here real, real quick is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to generate a, a corridor, a Civil 3D corridor, right? and it's going to be very basic. I just set a couple of standard features. Right, in terms of what I want to use for uh, my components right, and what surface I want to daylight to. I'm going to set a target surface. And I'm just going to go ahead and let uh, Civil 3D build my actual corridor. Right, just let it process that. It takes just a second. Now you can see it actually generated for me here in my plan view a corridor, which is a three-dimensional model of my roadway. And you can also see, if you look here, you'll see that I've got your center line of road, my curbs, and then I've got a sidewalk. And then I'm daylighting. Right? And it's taking the daylight into consideration right? based on the height, the elevational height of the road that you see here that's controlled in my profile. So just to show you real quick, I'm just going to click on this corridor and I'm going to open it up in a 3D view, 3D view, excuse me, so that you guys can see right? exactly what it is we just built. And you can see it's just a standard roadway and you see it does take into account right? the curve of the roadway, where the roadways go up and down, where the center line's you know, coming up over a hill and back down. And more importantly, you can see that what it's doing Right, is that it's actively um, grading for me. I've set these side slope, these daylight conditions at a set slope down to that existing surveyed surface. Right? And you can see that I've got a typical roadway structure you know, with my road depth, curbs, sidewalk, etc. Right? And Civil 3D is handling that whole fully defined three-dimensional model for me. So why is that important? Well, it's really important because what it does is it brings us into this uh, concept of being able to automatically update and, and handle all the data. So if I just went in and I just did this, this roadway design and we finalized all of our layout, what most folks wind up doing who aren't using Civil 3D is now have to go in and they have to go through all of these cross sections. You see I got a lot of cross sections on this road that I'm showing. Right? I'm running them every uh, 50 feet or so. So they have to go in and now they have to start drawing in all of that information right, at each section of the roadway. Well. With Civil 3D, it really is this easy. Here's my existing cross sections. All I have to do is go in and add additional sampling sources directly to my cross sections. Right? And with that, I can go ahead and just say, okay, you know what? Let's add the corridor that I just designed and have that show up in my cross sections. Right? And it's as simple as that. It takes a second to process it because right? it's going through a large number of cross sections. But again, think of you know these few seconds that I'm talking here in terms of how long does it take you to manually update those cross sections? That can be a day or two days easily worth of work. Right? Now you can see that not only does it bring in my new design, right? Here's my, a cross section of my road. The red line is my existing surface. But it also gives me labels in terms of offsets and elevations from center to outsides. And I can adjust the width and make these wider or higher or whatever it is I need to do. But you can see that all of my cross sections, every single one of them, 
was instantly updated so that I can see exactly what's going on through my entire, entire corridor here, right? So that's really, really cool. It's a huge time saver. And I don't care if you're working a small three acre project or a massive 3000 acre airport project, right? That's gonna have a dramatic impact on your bottom line. We just saved two days worth of work just with that, okay? So let me show you what else we can do here with Civil 3D and taking the, you know, uh, the fact that everything in Civil 3D is dynamically linked. So what if we were to go in and we were to change the profile and say, look, right now, right, this uh, station zero is kind of starting off at, ah, that's about 189 and change. Right? I just want to grab that and I'm going to bring it up and say, look, if we change the, the start of the roadway, right, to a 194 elevation, I can just change that there in the profile. Right? And you can see that now it changed my slope. It relabeled everything for me. Right? But now all I have to do is over here, I can just go ahead and say, look, rebuild my corridor. And you watch what it's going to do. Watch the side slope. See where these kind of magenta daylight lines are on either side of my corridor? Just by changing that elevation, the slope is going to go out further because I'm up higher at the center line. It's going to take longer. Right? And there you go. You can see that it, oops, sorry, I'm in the wrong uh, window there. You see that now, I have a much larger slope going on at here. And same thing like we did before. If I go ahead and I just take a look at that in my 3D view, you'll see that up at that end of the roadway, right, that it has dramatically increased my slopes, right, because I now have a much higher setup working, okay? So you can see how it now, oops, sorry, kind of zoomed into the wrong, wrong place there, um, that it, you know, has kind of extended out my slope side to side to get me to exactly where I need to be. Right? So that's great. So I didn't have to do anything there other than just update my, my corridor. And actually, I can even set that to do that automatically. I just wanted to show you guys that you can do it manually. And the same thing is true in terms of updating your plan. That's right. So if I come over here and I say, look, maybe we're going to start this corridor uh, over here. I'm just going to move the center line of my road. Right? Now that's going to hold and maintain my center line elevation right out here at my approximately 194. Okay, right? And what I want to show you guys is that everything else is updating in real time. So when this is done processing and re redoing uh, the corridor here, right? there you go. You can see that it redid the corridor. Now all I have to do is, again, just go ahead and rebuild my corridor. Right? And then you'll watch over here, we'll go and we'll take a look at the cross sections as soon as this corridor is done. You see it's going to recalculate it based off of this point being at the 194 elevation. Right? And it's going to update accordingly all of my cross sections. So you can see it, it did an entirely new slope calculation for the sides. And down here, you see that it actually took and it moved right, my cross sections up. So you can see this red line is where it was before at the existing elevation. And then when I moved it up the two feet, I didn't have to do anything. It's telling you that, hey, now your new cross section is up here, okay? And I could easily adjust the width so that I could see exactly how far out it took to daylight and so on. That's just kind of a, a display setup. But I, I hope what I can, you know, or, or what I've given you guys today is an idea of how dramatic this dynamic modeling concept inside of Civil 3D is and how whether you're working a small job or a large job, anything that can actively give you the ability to just go and make one change and update multiple objects like cross sections and profiles and, and roadway corridors and surfaces and every one of them being linked together, not just within a single document, but I can actually control and set those links so that a change I make on page one updates the cross sections that are on page 904. Okay, that's what you can do with Civil 3D. And I wanna thank you guys for taking the time to listen to me today. And I wanna point out to you that Zentech Consultants are civil 3d experts and specialists if you have civil 3d and you're looking for someone to help you kind of get your templates your standards all of these default display items and this interactivity built and structured for you we're here to help you with that we're also real big um, on the training side and we regularly train your folks on the best ways to use civil 3d and how to really understand what these objects are and how they all link together and it's far easier than you'd think uh, but we're to help you guys with your training as well. And we hope that you'll reach out to us. And I want to thank you all for spending the time with us today. Enjoy.